Yes, hello, and I'm going to talk about some practicalities in using neural pixels. Um, so this is kind of uh, instead of having the demos that we usually have. And yeah, some things that I will be saying are probably quite trivial for some of you. Others may not be. But if you have questions, if there's anything unclear, then please feel free to ask lots of questions. So I will talk about preparing a probe. Uh, preparing a setup and starting the recording and yeah before sorry before I start let me show you some resources that are really helpful so this is uh, this um, wiki page on the github uh, mostly I think made by Nick and this Slack channel is really useful so you can ask lots of questions there are lots of people are there knowledgeable and have made lots of experience with using neuropixels um, also the neuropixels website which has the manual and um, this web page shows has lots of information about um, spike glx and also some videos uh, which i'm going to show you now some of them so yeah at the very beginning you will get your probe in a box like this and yeah first question is how to handle uh, the box and the probes. Um, so, uh, Sylvia, your yeah. audio is fine, but your video is kind of uh, interrupting. So I'm going to stop your video. Okay? Yes, please. But, Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you open the box, you need to remember that the probes or the shanks will be facing uh, the lid or where the lid is attached. So you really want to lift uh, the lid this way and not the other way otherwise you already break your probes or it's highly likely that you will break them then you will find the probes here in this box and they're probably a bit stuck so the first thing to do is you need to kind of wiggle them maybe with the forceps so you can easily handle them once you've done this you can just uh, pick them with your hands so the shank is here you can probably not see them but on the opposite side you can pick them with your hands uh, while kind of lifting the, the foam. Okay, so once you have your probe out of the box, you need to do several uh, preparation steps before you can start recording. And one of those, the first one you'll probably do is soldering. So as we heard previously, you need to ground uh, your electrode and um, the goal of soldering is that to provide an extension of the ground or end or reference electrodes that are on the probe. So you can ground your saline or um, PBS solution that is covering the brain. Okay, so there are several sites you can have on the probe that you can um, solder your wire to. And these are here shown by these arrows. So if you want to distinguish between ground and reference, you need to distinguish left and right. So the white arrows show you where the ground um, can be sorted to and the gray arrows show you the reference okay you can take any of those sites but um, yeah as a tip it is usually suggested to solder far away from the electronics so that if you use a high heat um, then it's less likely to destroy any of the electronics okay um, yes so how do you actually solder? So there are how to do this. And here are a few pictures of this. So first of all, you need to secure your probe. You can do this uh, on an elevated surface like here and with a double sided uh, tape. You can just put your probe there so it's secured. Then you take a wire, um, silver wire, for example, uh, and you put it through if you want to use or uh, you want to uh, use reference and ground you can just take the wire and lead it through ground and reference uh, like here like so and then once the wire is led through both um, holes uh, ground and reference then you can just solder it to the probe okay and if you don't want to use these arms here you can cut them as was shown previously here on this page but i think no one really is doing this or no i don't know anybody who's doing this um yeah you have to be careful with how to solder so it's usually uh, recommended to use a lead-based solder because it can be used at lower temperatures 
And then once you have sorted your wire, you can either stick a crocodile clip to it or use connectors like shown on this page. But there is uh, one warning I give you because soldering can easily introduce noise. So there's lots of ways you can do it wrong. Um, I'm not going to talk about it in detail, but again, there's lots of resources listed here that uh, you can look at so you can learn how to do uh, proper soldering. Um, right, and then once you have soldered, then you can check your connection, for example, with the voltmeter as shown here. So it's just to check whether your connections um, are correct. Okay, then after you have soldered, so that you can actually mount it. So nowadays, uh, the NeuroPixels probes can come with a metal cap. So here, you see this here, it's directly, it's already glued to the probe and have these, has these dovetails shown here. And these will fit directly into these stereotactic rods that you can also get from the iMac, I think, or from SensorPex, who uh, also sells um, manipulators. Um, the disadvantage of having the metal caps on your probes already is that they are slightly heavier and thicker. But I guess if you're doing um, acute recordings, then you will not um, you will not bother with ha having a heavier electrode. So I guess only if you're doing uh, chronic recordings or in freely moving animals, then you might not want to have a metal cap here. Okay. So once you have the metal cap and the holder, then you can slide it into the, the probe holder and fix it with a screw here. Um, and yes, please interrupt me if there are questions that I can answer immediately. Um, so if you have a probe that did not come with a metal cap and you need to glue it, this is how you do it. So I think we had several um, probes that did not come with this metal cap because it was not available yet and maybe you decided or you still have these older kinds of probes so you have a metal cap separately and you need to attach it so you need to be really careful that the metal cap and the probe or the shank are perfectly near to perfectly aligned otherwise your shank will cut through the brain instead of going in smoothly in along one dimension so one idea is that you fix the metal cap on a surface like this table and align it to a straight marker like here, this edge of the table. Then you can apply some glue on top of this metal cap, for example, two component glue like epoxy. And then you place your probe very carefully the cap and of course align it uh, to the same straight marker as you align the metal cap. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, the audio one funny, just as you described the second step, and people might be watching this video going, what did she say? Can you just do <laughs> yeah, it again, do course. the second step again? So the sec second step, after you have applied the epoxy, you just put on the probe and align it carefully to the same straight marker. For example, here, uh, this would be the edge of the table. Okay, so you align it and then you fix it, the probe to the table, for example, with some tape, so that the uh, glue can cure for a while and makes a perfect connection to the metal tape. Okay, so this is about the mounting. Once the metal cap is um, glued to the probe, you can then um, slide the whole probe to the rod, which will be held later on by the manipulator. So you need to be careful with this again. Um, you, you can use forceps again to move the probe into this holder. Once it is in place, you can um, just uh, tighten or fasten the screw. Okay, so now we have the probe fixed to the rod that will be held by the manipulator. Now we can connect everything. So we have talked about the probe. Um, which needs to be connected to the head stage, which needs to be connected to this interface cable, which then goes to the acquisition module, which sits in this chassis. Okay, so we go through this step by step. The first one is you want to connect this SIF area, which you can see here, 
to the head stage. Okay. Um, here is a zoom into this stiff area. It has a front side and a back side. You need to be sure which is which. This is the head stage and you want to slide the stiff area in the right um, direction into this head stage here. So this black part needs to be open. You slide in the stiff area like so, and then you can close um, the black part. So it's fixed. Um, and another note of warning, uh, this caused me lots of problems once I tried it because I thought I fixed it perfectly, but then got lots of errors when I tried to um, use this probe. And it's really quite uh, tricky because you need to perfectly align this uh, SIF area to the head stage. So if it's not working, if you get errors, maybe just try and do it again, correct the, the placement, like really try to align it as well as you can and just try again. Okay. And then once you have connected the probe to the head stage and we already to the to the rod, you then have to or you want to connect the head stage securely to the rod. Okay. So for example, you can just simply do it with tape or some clever people have developed um, 3D printed pieces that really nicely fit with this head stage. So you can put the 3D printed um, pieces to the rod and then connect or glue the head stage to those pieces. Okay. Right, and the second stage, which you will need to do before every recording is then just to connect the interface cable. So this part of the interface cable to the head stage. Okay. And of course, then the other part of the cable is connected to the um, acquisition module. Uh, Sylvia, right. it yes. might help to explain that the cable is super long, just for people who are doing freely moving. It, 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 there's yes. no other way, reason why it's so enormously long. I see. Sorry, the detail. Yes, it is very long. Also, if you're, I mean, I guess usually you have your um, recording module, it could be quite far away from your recording setup. So this was usually so far not a problem for us. Yeah. And I guess also for freely moving, animals, yeah, you have quite a lot of freedom with this long cable. Um, right, now let me come to manipulators. Um, so we have, or I have only used sensor packs, which, uh, and with these we were very um, happy. Um, so basically here you see the manipulator, here will be the rod together with the probe. And then it comes together with this uh, motor control, so with four, with four wheels because the manipulator has four axes of movement and you also have this touchpad with which you can change something. You can see um, the movements in each axis and also change some things. So as I said, there are four axes of movement. So basically you can move in X and Y. You can move up and down in this direction. And the fourth axis is along the shank. So your probe will sit in this direction and the manipulator can also move in this direction. Um, in each direction, you have a movement range of 20 millimeters, which is really not a lot. We will come to this a, a bit later. And then you can, or you have to probably change some angles, namely the yaw, and this you can just change by um, turning the whole manipulator sitting on a breadboard, for example. And you can also change the pitch. Like so with just um, using a screw on the other side, I think. Um, yes, as I said, the probe will be held on a rod and the rod is sitting along this dimension. Um, the displays here can all be zeroed, which is nice if you enter the probe or enter with the probe in the in the brain. So you can zero when you think you have reached the brain surface. Um, well, we, uh, we have a question from the audience. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to give you permission to talk, Stephanos. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, excellent. Uh, just about the cable the uh, that goes to the NeuroPixels probe, if it can be affected by peripheral, uh, um, peripher other peripherals that are electrically active, can you get um, the signal mm -hmm. that travels 
to the cable affected by such sources? So I have never experienced any problem with the with the cable so that it's like picking up other signals. And I guess it's because it's already a digital signal. So that's less of a problem. Um, yeah. I see. Okay. Thanks. So yeah, of course it, it would be a problem if it's still analog and then a longer cable would be bad, but because of the digitalization, that's not, not a problem. Okay. Um, so I go on. Where was I? The display can be zeroed. And also each axis of movement can be disabled. So once you are basically inside the brain or inserting the brain, you will only want to move, of course, this dimension and not any other dimension. And to be sure that this is not happening, you can disable each of these other axes. And um, now I heard you can also insert um, you can move each axis automatically with a certain speed. Um, and you can do this by controlling this touchpad, which was not previously possible, but now they updated their, their software, which is pretty nice. Um, yes, yeah, so this is about sensor packs. Now there's also other manipulators called New Scale, and they did this kind of fancy setup. If you want to use really lots of difficult um, setups, I guess. Uh, at least I've... at least on my end, the audio went a bit funny. Can you just say again, something setups? Sorry. <laughs> um, so a new scale is, a, is another company who makes manipulators and they invented this very fancy um, setup to use lots of different probes and uh, maneuver each of them independently. I have not used it, but I think Nick did and I would ask him to give some uh, to tell us what he thinks about new scale, if you can, Nick. Yeah. So I'll just let me just say that um, you know the Sensapex one we're talking about because that's the one that we've used, um, and we had you know sort of compared a few a few options in choosing it, and we think it's a good option for neuropixels. Um, and the new scale one we're talking about because that's the one used at the Allen Institute, and it's a sort of a neuro neuropixel specific design, so it's it's worth worth being aware of. Um, but let me just say that you know any any manipulators that you use, you know even manual ones if you like, um, but certainly electronic ones like made by Loig and Newman or Scientifica or whatever company, um, those are all you know it just needs to be a manipulator that holds a rod and allows you to to control the probe entering the brain. So it, you know any any manipulator you like. If there's nothing special about the neuropixels here, um, the new scale one that you can see just very briefly. Um, we did not choose to go with that one because um, as you can see here, there's a lot sort of more hardware and uh, what they haven't shown in this illustration is there's a lot more cables um, involved. And so it's a bit harder to get in other things like cameras to monitor behavior and, and, and uh, light sources for optogenics, et cetera. Um, I also found that their, um, their manipulators were a bit more sort of wobbly in a funny way, um, whereas the SenseFX ones feel really strong and sturdy. Um, and I think that they have by now improved the travel distance and the control software of the new scale. Um, but at the time we were considering this, these also weren't very um, useful. So there were a lot of advantages to the sense effects. Um, I think if you're considering a big investment into one of these, um, you can probably ask both companies to send you a demo one or, or find them at SFN or something like that. Um, if, if we ever meet in person at SFN again. Um, okay, thanks <laughs> Sylvia. Okay, um, maybe I can answer another question that came up here about dovetails and alignment. So Diogo asked uh, whether there is a problem. So if the dovetail has some slight deviation relative to the probe axis, will this cause issues when inserting the probe into the brain? Yes. I mean, you can probably still just insert the, the probe. But of course, if, if it's not aligned with the axis of motion, then you will cut like with a knife through the brain, right? And the, the more, the bigger the deviation, the more you cut. So you should really be careful uh, with the alignment. And he says some dovetails seem to be an extremely tight fit relative to the post holders. Is there any chance they can get stuck in the post or do you use individual posts for every probe? So, sorry to say, but I haven't actually used the dovetails. I always glued um, the probes to our uh, rods previously. Um, 
so I don't know how tight they are, but usually what we do is we, for each probe, we have one rod. So you just do this once. Um, you connect or you fix the probe once to the rod and then it stays in the rod until your probe breaks or whatever. You can't use it anymore. So it yeah, shouldn't, hopefully shouldn't be a big problem once you've solved it uh, for each probe. All right. Um, let me go on. So the next slide is on manipulators and actually how to prepare your setup. So yeah, this is very important, I find. Um, before you start any recording, really very carefully plan the positioning of your manipulators. Um, so here you see two manipulators. Sorry for the image, there's lots of stuff going on, so it's not really clear where the manipulators are, but I hope <laughs> you can figure it out. So at first you need to determine the angles um, for your recording and the position of the manipulator. So angles, again, your, so how you um, yeah, position the manipulator to the angle to the or the axis of the animal and also the how steep the probe should be. But then once you have this, really go to your setup and try it out with dummy probes or at least with just the, the rods in the manipulators because you want to lower them and they need to be really close to where the brain will be at the end because there's, as I said, the, the range of movement is very small <laughs> and it usually takes quite a while to figure out how your manipulators uh, or where they should be exactly positioned. Um, especially if you have several manipulators, several probes. Um, yes, and if you have multiple probes, really consider where they could collide and then plan it so to avoid collisions. And usually, or some people, uh, what happens if the probes collide in the brain? I think you really don't need to worry about collisions in the brain. Um, it's much more likely that collisions happen outside the brain where the big hardware is. Okay. Um, so here you see an example of a breadboard where we position two um, manipulators, so the basis of the manipulators, to have two probes in the same hemisphere recording from the superior clicklers in this case. And here you can see four probes positioned in the head, all in the superior clicklers. And you can see it's really tight. So you need to try out with your manipulators how to position them. And also you see that each probe is angled in a certain way so that if you go down, they don't hit, hit each other, okay, outside of the brain. Okay, once you have that, then you probably want to make craniotomies and to mark your sites. So just uh, quickly, um, once you figured out where your um, probe should go, mark the entry point on the remaining skull. So if you do your craniotomy, it's, it's not lost. So you have to set your marks, of course, outside the craniotomy. Use a marker and maybe scratch the bone so that it's not lost. Um, through water on the brain or some, some other ways. Um, about the size of your craniotomy, you should find a good compromise between big, too big and too small. So too big usually means the brain will move and you have less stability, so it will just move up and down. If your craniotomy is really tiny, it will be really difficult to access. For example, if you need to remove or cut the dura a little bit, or you need some flexibility to place the probe somewhere else, and yes, also think about during your surgery to prepare a large well to hold the, the saline or the, the buffer. For example, you can use some kind of 3D printed well that just goes on top of the, um, the skull. You have five minutes. Yes, let's see. If I can't finish today, maybe I can have a few minutes tomorrow. Okay, so many people want to apply some dye to the probe so you can figure out later on during histology where your probe actually went so you can get pictures like this and then um, yeah look which areas were traversed so you can use some dyes like this we use Vibrant dye i dye o dye d which give you different colors um, but be careful if you want to use uh, brain clearing method methods you have to use a different dye uh, which stays in the tissue. So that is uh, called vibrant CN dye I. Okay, then to apply the dye, um, you want to be careful, of course, and touch the probe with a drop like here. But then what you 
don't want to do is just move along because this will just like yeah, probably not much of the die will stay stick on the probe so what you do you touch the probe with a drop and then leave it again okay instead of just going back and forth this is actually shown in this video but for time reasons i think i will just go over this uh, um, one, one thing that might be helpful is to tell people that the probe sorry if you said it and i missed it the probes can flex this is something that people are not used to. These yes, I will talk about this in <laughs> in okay. a minute when we talk about insertion. But yes, that, that is definitely true. And if, if it flexes a bit when you put the drop or when you touch it a little bit, it's not a problem if you do it slowly. Okay, now you're ready to, to do a recording and you need to prepare your setup every time um, for recording and before you place an animal. So what you do, the steps are, you calibrate your manipulators. This might be specific to sensor packs, I don't know. And move your manipulators at the, to the topmost position so that you have the biggest range to move them down later on. Um, you will place your probes into the manipulator, as you can see here, for example. So you place them quite high up before you put the animal, so you have some room. Um, you may want to do the calibration with the probes in place because the added weight will change the calibration but then of course you need to be extra careful because they will move around and they might collide into each other so yeah you need to be careful with that then once you have the probes placed there you connect the cables as you can see here so you need to connect the um, interface cable to the head stage but also your ground cable okay as you can see here and all the ground cables will then be connected to a single wire, which you can then place into the recording well. Okay. Um, and at the end, you, yeah, you should fix all those cables securely so they're not swinging around and, you know, swinging into your probes and break your probes. So be careful with that. Um, yes. I'm out of time i don't know what's the best solution should i take a few minutes next time oh no, please uh, it's it's very important what you're talking about so take your time and we will adjust and andy says that he can easily give you five minutes if okay not great so take your <laughs> yeah, time I, i'm almost done um so once this is all in place then you position your animal and place the ground wire and i just want to show we have this kind of nice setup here where you can place the animal into the head holder as you can see here but the whole stage where the animal is sitting is sitting on these rails so you have a lot of space placing the animal and then you can just slide the whole stage under the probes that are sitting here okay so here you see the animal is under the probes you can place your ground wire into the well and yes these are the probes on top here you see it a bit better the ground wire and you want to have the ground wire really out of the way for your probes so giving you much space to place the probes then you want to lower your probes and the first step is just to do it manually so you just slide them down really very close to the brain because again remember you just have two centimeters to lower the probes um, so that you can do this like this and this is kind of the end positioning before moving them with the motors of the manipulators so it is pretty close um, and now i come to the insertion so as matteo mentioned the probes do bend a lot here you can see it um, this is in the um, manual also so this is uh, two directions in one it flexes even more so where the probe is thinner this is the lateral deflection it deflects it uh, flexes less before it breaks but still considerably so don't be afraid if you see a probe flexing especially if it's slow like if you touch the brain that's fine but don't uh, give it any shocks so that it um, bends very quickly that can really break the probe the insertion is easier. Can I just quickly clarify that? Is, yeah. I wouldn't probably recommend deflecting it as much as shown in that picture. Yes. Um, but the point is, like, if you if you touch it to the the skull or the dura and it starts to bend a little, you don't have to freak out because that's okay. But don't like force it to bend a whole lot. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
Yes, but the point is that it could be quite difficult to enter the dura because of this flexibility. So it's easiest if um, if the dura is fresh, so to say, shortly after craniotomy. But you, if you have difficulties, you can try approaching the dura with a higher speed, for example. This sometimes helps. You can try a nearby location if there was some dura growth on the particular location you want to go, if you have this flexibility. You can also cut the dura, but of course, just like with a needle, with a hypodermic needle, but you have to be super careful, especially if you want to record from neurons on the surface of the brain. Uh, other people I read said you can soak the dura in warm um, ACSF just for a few minutes. This makes the dura more flexible. Or you can use dura gel, which you apply, for example, during your, or just shortly after the craniotomy. And then you can just, well, it, it keeps the dura kind of soft and you can then go with your probe through this dura gel. Um, speed of insertion. This is kind of a matter of philosophy or it was in our lab for a long time. So we think slow is probably better. But here is now a paper that tried many different speeds in red. And it seems that the slowest speed they tried, so two microns per second, works best in terms of you know, keeping most of the neuron after you inserted the, um, the probe. So how do you recognize you have reached the brain surface? So we usually look at the LFP. And when you enter the dura, or you, yeah, you go through the dura, you get really big deflections in the LFP, which tell you, okay, now you're actually in the brain. And this is the good time to zero your manipulator. So you know where the brain surface is and how far you, how deep you go with your probes. Of course, once at, you're at this step, you're in the brain, you really do not want to move any other axis. That, was, that would mean you're cutting through the brain. So it's a good idea to inactivate all other axes on the manipulator. And then also very important, you should keep observing your probes while they are inserted during the microscope. So don't assume what, just because the first few microns went smoothly, it will go like this <laughs> during the whole insertion. It might not. They sometimes get stuck and bend a lot. So be ready to stop the insertion. Um, once you have reached the depth, then just read or we think it's a good idea to retract the probe a bit, like for 100 microns or so to release the tension and increase recording stability. And also we thought we found that it's a good idea to a few, maybe five to 10 minutes just to let this um, to wait those minutes before you start the recording so the probe can settle. And the last point is after the insertion, don't uh, forget to fill your recording chamber with ACSF or saline um, so you have a good connection to the ground. Uh, and just, yeah, one, the last, my last slide is after your recordings, you should take care uh, about cleaning your probes so that they stay in a good condition. So we use uh, Targesign. So just soak it in there for about 30 minutes, um, like so, uh, here in these little vials, and then take them out and use a new vial with um, deionized water. And we then usually keep the probes there um, until the next recording. Probably other enzymatic cleaners are also okay instead of Targazyme. And you can also use alcohol, but yeah, do remember to clean it with water because neither of these th things, enzymatic uh, cleaners or alcohol, you want to have in the brain. And that's it. If you have time for questions, I can answer. <laughs>